many of you here today speak a language other than your mother tongue. But what if I asked you to fill out a tax form in this language? What if I tried to teach you quantum physics? Language is the way we as human beings communicate with each other, and it forms a pillar of democracy and good governance. The language in which a society communicates in, or the lack thereof, can have a great effect on the political stability of any multilingual society. In a continent as linguistically diverse and historically unstable as Africa, language policy has become somewhat of a political labyrinth, sometimes a seemingly impossible one. South Africa is often called the rainbow nation due to its great diversity, with a population that encompasses those that identify as white, black, Asian, and biracial. There are 35 distinct languages spoken in South Africa, including the famous clicking languages such as Nkosa. Yeah, you heard me right, Nkosa. <laughs> as in the language, the famous, the iconic Afro-pop star Miriam Makeba recorded uh, her famous song, <laughs> No? Nobody? Unfortunately, South Africa's history has been scarred by four decades of institutionalized racism and white minority rule known as apartheid, or literally, apartness. Under the suppressive police state, indigenous African languages were oppressed alongside their native speakers. English and Afrikaans, a Dutch offshoot spoken by the majority of the white ruling class, were upheld as the only national languages despite the fact that the vast minority of people that only, that only the minority of the people actually spoke these languages at home and fluently. After a long struggle, catalyzed by the African National Congress, apartheid was finally dismantled, and South Africans were able to uh, elect their first black African president, the famous civil rights activist, Nelson Mandela. In 1996, he drafted a new constitution, and in this constitution was a language policy that recognized 11 of South Africa's most widely spoken languages, including English and Afrikaans, as official languages, holding them up equally and, w and promising to develop them equally as well. Now, this language policy has come with its fair share of criticism uh, over the years, as well as from the South African government itself, which published the National Language Framework of 2003 to try and speed up the process that seemed to be in a lull. Now, I was initially just interested in studying how language policy can work on a continent as linguistically diverse as Africa. This map shows only 20% of the languages spoken in Africa due to the lack of space on the map. One interesting contrasting language policy I stumbled upon that really fascinated me was Tanzania's. In Tanzania, they only recognize one official language, Kiswahili, which is spoken by the vast majority of the population. Julius Nyerere, the founding father of Tanzania, standardized t Kiswahili across the board from education to government and though this might seem less inclusive than South Africa's policy, it has actually led to more national unity and political stability in the past few years. Now, this is not to say that I believe that this policy is better than South Africa's, but rather that Tanzania has shown more political will to implement their language policy for the betterment of their people. And this is why I was interested in looking at South Africa. Why hasn't this language policy done its job, essentially, and achieved Man Mandela's ambitious dream? To learn more about this, I reached out to two South African government officials and one scholar, and I got a few responses and several key points that kept coming up that led me towards finding out more about the needs of South Africans from the language policy. The first one was language and education policy. Um, early on in my research, I stumbled upon a, a very interesting study by Zubeda Desai, who is a professor at the University of Western Cape, and in this study, she showed a cartoon to a group of Nkosa school children and asked them to describe this cartoon or what was going on in the cartoon in English and their native tongue that they spoke best, Nkosa. Obviously, these students were better at explaining it in their native tongue. And she concluded her study by saying that students learn better when, t when taught in a language they have a strong grasp of, usually their mother tongue. Now, this might seem obvious, but clearly hasn't, it clearly hasn't been obvious enough to the South African government to implement language policy in education. And it really highlighted to me the importance of this topic and the effects it can have on human development. Uh, one of my interviewees actually brought up the issue of Afrikaans schools, which have historically, even in apartheid South Africa, allowed pe uh, Afrikaner people to learn in their native tongue. Data from South Africa also shows that the, the white South Africans form a wider share of people in higher education than the rest of the population, which may in part be due to this, uh, to this privilege they have that others don't share. 
Now, one possible solution offered by one of the interviewees was more funding from the government towards African students or any students that, that wish to pursue African languages in higher education. Um, I thought this was very interesting and a very helpful solution because it would not only allow so uh, South African students to be able to learn in their mother tongues more efficiently, but it would also lead the way to a new generation of African language teachers and pioneers for standardizing these African languages moving on to the future. This graph from the 2011 census of South Africa shows that there is actually a decrease in some of the indigenous language, in, in the number of people speaking some of these indigenous languages between 2001 and 2011, with an increase shown in Afrikaans and English as they are seen as kind of being held up more or being held as more equal than the rest. Despite the fact that the South African government has promised to uphold all languages equally and have them on equal footing with one another, there is clearly an issue in that, that these indigenous languages, some of which, like Ngosa and Zulu, are the most widely spoken, are seeing sharp decreases in their speakers at home. Another issue that popped up frequently was the celebration of culture and language in South Africa. One way this could be done is through a national indigenous language day of sorts, in which there's a public holiday in which uh, that South Africans are allowed to share their language and culture with one another, which could lead to more cross-cultural exchange, more understanding of one another's backgrounds and languages, and kind of strengthening the diversity of the nation. One of my interviewees uh, talked about Mandela Day when discussing this, Mandela Day being a very, very big event held every year on Mandela's uh, Birth, uh, on Mandela's birthday in South Africa to celebrate what he's done, saying if the same, that, that if the same publicity and marketing were used for a National Indigenous Language Day as they are for Mandela Day, it would be a great help to the cause of spreading the issue, spreading awareness of this issue in South Africa. 25 years after, the, after South Africa's emancipation from apartheid and 23 after the drafting of this new language policy, there is still quite a bit of progress left to be made. Now this can be done either through diversifying language policies in departments and offices, or funding for more African, so for more African language scholarship. But at the end of the day, South Africa needs to show more political will in implementing their language policy in order to create a South Africa that's not only diverse, but also egalitarian and safe. Language tends to form a barrier between us as human beings, but it doesn't have to. By being more aware and more sensitive towards the role of language professionally and casually in life and prioritizing language policy politically, we can come closer to uniting as humankind while at the same time maintaining the beauty of diversity and cultural awareness. Ngia Bonga, Nkosi, Danke, thank you. Mm -hmm.